Glaucomas um Webinar, é uma iniciativa dos serviços de glaucoma do Centro Oftalmológico de Minas Gerais, do Hospital São Geraldo, FMG, do Instituto de Óleo e Ciências Médicas. Eu agradeço a participação de todos e também aos nossos patrocinadores, a Ofta Vision Health, a Allergan, Latinofarma e a Glaucus. E a gente vai passar agora um vídeo de um dos nossos patrocinadores. Glaucos is proud to be the industry pioneer, founder, and leader of microinvasive glaucoma surgery, or MIGS. Believed to be the smallest devices ever implanted in the human body, the Glaucos Eye Stent and Eye Stent Inject Trabecular Micro Bypass Stents are the ophthalmic market's flagship MIGS devices and have helped hundreds of thousands of glaucoma patients worldwide. Each eye stent and eye stent inject is individually formed out of surgical titanium. With a high-tech precision process, each stent is cut, deburred, and inspected. The stents are then placed into a gel pack grid to help keep track of each device. Using a smart scope that magnifies each device to 300 to 500 times its size, the eye stent and eye stent inject stents are examined to verify that they meet quality standards, including exact specifications and dimensions. Following inspection, the stents are sent to the wet lab for surface preparation and deburring. Any burrs or oils remaining from the manufacturing process are removed, leaving the surface of each eye stent and eye stent inject smooth and ready for the clean room. In the clean room, the stents are coated with a proprietary heparin solution to ensure a free flow of aqueous once the device is placed in the eye. The inserters are assembled by hand and cleaned. Each device is subjected to quality control inspection during the manufacturing process. Lab technicians manually attach each stent into an inserter and examine and adjust the stent placement. The now assembled system is placed into the custom tray, then sealed before the final packaging. Once packaged, the device is properly labeled, scanned into inventory, and prepared for shipping to surgical centers around the world. From start to finish, the manufacturing process of every Glaucos eye stent and eye stent inject trabecular micro bypass stent includes inspection, quality assurance testing, and hands-on assembly to maximize the therapeutic benefits for cataract patients with mild to moderate glaucoma. Today, we are really honored to have Dr. Lilith Voskania with us, one of the most mix experts who has performed this kind of surgery for approximately 15 years and also more than 60,000 eye stent inject surgeries. It was a pleasure to me having the opportunity to meet her last year on CIMASP and to learn some important tips with her. Emilio has met her in Armenia. Am I right, Emilio? Yes, Clarice, it was a great experience for me. And I very welcome you, Dr. Lilith, to our platform, the Glaucoma Zoom. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our attendees, to my friends. Um, it's a great honor to, to have you again. Mm -hmm. uh, as Clarice mentioned, we, we, we saw last year in Sao Paulo. And Dr. Lilith is going to share with us her experience with eye stents, eye stent G1, eye stent inject, and the new devices that are coming. And Dr. Lilith is the main instructor of this kind of surgery for many, many important glaucoma surgeries in the world. So it's my pleasure to introduce you, Dr. Lilith, and now the, the audience all is all yours. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Emilio. Thank you, Clarice. Thanks, my all my Brazilian friends, colleagues. Um, that's a, it's been already 18 months. I've been in Brazil and very impressed of this country, of those people, very kind. And I have very nice doctors, friends, colleagues. And uh, really, this is my great pleasure to know you, to meet you somewhere, and to continue to work and uh, have a friendship with all of you. And I'm very happy and really thank you very much for this opportunity to introduce 
my uh, experience, my knowledge is about um, sense and lots of things that can be, I, I'm, I'm prepared to say. Thank you very much again. And maybe I can start? Yeah, please. Okay, today we will talk about uh, our logo stands. And uh, this is the hospital where I work. And um, I think you see that's the entrance into the hospital. And there's a Aika Ahmed, who was one of the first people who was coming here after Dr. Richard Hill. Professor and Lilith, you should, you should only to uh, share the screen. Button. You should do it again. Okay. Yes, one more time. I promise we'll be the last one. <laughs> Share screen. Yes. I don't know what's the reason it does not. You don't see now the screen? And no, there's... you need you need you need to click the green button. I do. Do you see now? Not yet. Yes, nice. Now you should only yeah, start presenting. Is that okay now? Great, yes. great. Okay. Again, uh, this is our hospital where we work. And this is Dr. Ike Ahmed, who was coming to our hospital doing the first surgeries after Dr. Richard Hill, who was one of the founders in the beginning of making the eye stand, the stents, glauco stents. And that's uh, and uh, next to him is the patient who was involved to the program. This is the hospital. That's how it starts. That's the hospital, our operating room where we are doing our all surgeries. If you see in the bottom end of this, uh, these are just the uh, boxes with the stands. This is the right after the surgery, the table where we do the surgeries, and the other table where we write all our information with the microscope, etc. This is right after the surgery. Our patients who was prepared for the procedure for surgery, our nurses, that's how we work. And all, whatever we were doing was um, on the screen. And so even the younger doctor could see that or the other doctors who were interested to see how the process going. That's how our um, operating room was working to um, make the life easier to show everything. This is the position in, in OR when a pay, when the doctors are sitting and starting to do their, I think you are familiar with such a moments. Just wanted to introduce, to remind you how we're doing. And the surgeries were going by the different doctors at our hospitals. You see the screen where we see all the details about surgeries. Uh, as you know, we are, that's a portfolio or the different types of glauco stents. Uh, maybe G1, G2, G3 is easier to remember, but the reason is that G1 is the eye stand, eye stand which goes into the trabecular meshwork. G2 is the eye stand inject, which we, will, we are going to talk more. G3 is the eye stand supra, which, going, which is going inside of suprachoroidal space. And this one, the last one, uh, I will just um, give you some very short information about idols which means that it's a stand with uh, medication inside. Just to remind you, because we have also the, the young doctors involved with this um, lecture about the structure of anterior chamber angle, how the outflow is going, the outflow of anterior chamber fluid through trabecular meshwork, through the three um, parts of the trabecular meshwork, and our stents are working exactly on this part. This can be inside of trabecular meshwork, this can be inside of Schlem's canal or inside of supra, supracoroidal space. We will talk about the details about the different types of this like right after that. Mm -hmm. For some reason.
some people are involved in the... Do you see my screen? Yes, but it's froze for us. Yes, for me also. <laughs> Let's see if we can maybe go. Yes, it's okay now. Uh, okay, so just just remind once more again about the stents which are going in the different parts of anterior chamber angle. Uh, as as everybody knows, and that's nothing new. That right now is the era for the stents for shunts and development of microinvasive glaucoma surgery, which or mix devices and procedures have been one of the most important advances in glaucoma surgery as everywhere in medical area, ophthalmology also involved for microinvasive intervention. We know that everywhere in medical area, now the stents and shunts are very uh, spread out, so and very effective. Glaucoma surgeries, which we, we are mostly are doing, are those with relatively more complications for modern clinical science. Although the glaucoma surgeries are bringing pressure very low down, and very effective in terms of a number, but because of a big number of complications, especially for modern science, modern days, glaucoma surgeries need to be improved, to be changed, to be more safe. That's how we think that the mix did and will do the revolution for the surgical treatment of glaucoma. When we go as an overview of the pipeline products in terms of a stents, I think we know the different types of stent. This is stent gel, stent from Aquasis, which is designed to connect anterior chamber with subconjunctival space and goes through the sclera. Cypass from Novartis, which was, you know, it was, uh, you should know about this stent as well, created, creating drainage pathway from anterior chamber to supracorridal space. Hydrus from Ivantis is a, like a long eyelash and intended to be placed into the Schlems canal. In focus micro shunt, which is now the property of something company, is placing in anterior chamber through an up external scleral needle and going posteriorly to the limbus. There are many emerging products, and I would like to go to the sidereal, which now we use, which we, now we are going to introduce you. Glaucus products, G1, G2, G3, IDOS. G1 is, as I already told, it's like I stand, goes into trabecular meshwork. That's it, like that filthy, like the angle structure with titanium, which is very effective when going right in a rightly placed into the trabecular mesh work, very effectively makes the outflow. I step inject, which we are going to introduce more today, goes into and through trabecular mesh work. And this like it, I stand inject itself makes like trabecular mesh work, Schlemm's canal, all the processes taking on it. I stand supra, which goes into supracoroidal space and improving uvea scleral pathway. Drug delivery, delivery stand, I dose, that's a stand which has medication inside of that. These stands bypass the trabecular meshwork, which is thought to be the primary so source of resistance of aqueous drainage in a most open angle glaucomas in order to improve outflow through the natural physiologic pathway and reduce intraocular pressure. When we say that's like a primary source of re resi resistance to aqueous drainage, this is like a, the first beginning part of outflow. And as we know, we have another part which is coming after angle itself. That's why that's, we should have very good outflow after trabecular meshwork and outer collector to have a best results with our stands. Just when go through the transformation of shift to micro scale injectable therapy, that's how it started, how it goes, where the evolution of the stents. This is the I stand, um, or the G1 stand, which we use now in combination with cataract surgery. In our country, we use it as a standalone procedure as well. Injectable, I stand inject, which I am sure that the doctors, the glaucoma specialists, are going to love best. It's very easier to perform and very effective as all the others in terms of uh, IOP uh, lowering and stabilizing. 
Supracoroidal space, which is flexible and tasteless, very fragile and very um, bending part, which goes into supracoroidal space, and the metallic part goes inside of anterior chamber as a half of the um, its length. And the other, which is a drug delivery stand, which is like a reservoir, has medication inside. Precision solutions for complete range of glaucoma disease states and progression looks like this scale. As, um, when we just uh, let me introduce in you know, two words about drug delivery system. This drug delivery system goes exactly into anterior chamber and targeted uh, drug delivery system targeted to release prostaglandin directly into anterior chamber and designed to be preloaded into a small gauge needle and inject injected via self-sealing needle penetration where it is secured within the eye. Once depleted, the eye dose can be removed and exchanged with a new eye dose to put and continuous glaucoma therapy to extend the period of time of working of this stent. Glaucos has designed the product to be the alternative to chronic daily prescription drop treatments, which may have high rates of patients non-compliance and cause ocular surface damage to glaucomatose eyes because of the medication which patients mostly use. That's how the, the uh, ideal uh, eye dose stent looks like. There is a reservoir where uh, the medication is filled out. That's how the eye is looking and you see the stent here. That's a non-seeing eye, one of the first cases we have done. So it's very nice looking and there is a medication inside. Just going uh, through the injectable drug delivery system, we should say that we have two types of, two major types of extraocular and intraocular. Extraocular, but very familiar, ocular therapeutics, ICOM, which go, some of those are going into the conjunctival space, the other is going into the canaliculus, the whole, and releases the medication into the conjunctival uh, space. But the, the best ones are the intraocular tense in the Glaucos idols with a medication is uh, one of the best ones. And Vista Allergan has bimatoprost. These are intraocular with drug delivery system. That's how it looks like. Just in a couple of words to introduce to you how it looks like and see the stands even sometime with biomicroscopy, you can see that. See the both eyes, one is that you don't see that much big difference between the color of the eye, although there is a stand with a prostaglandin inside. This is a case when the, when the stent is touching a little bit iris, but we are um, following the patients for a long time. We can replace it if it's necessary. Just going through the, our um, stents uh, exams, when, when the stent implantation just started, it was 2007, many skeptical doctors were thinking that when we do the surgeries, the stents do not go inside of proper area or especially for supracoroidal stents, it doesn't go into the supracoroidal space. And just for you to introduce the ultrasound photo, where we see how the stent goes exactly into the supracoroidal space. And that's why just going further, let's have a couple of words about I stand supra, the stent which goes into the supracoroidal space with a flexible part. And you see here, flexible part and the titanium part halfway visible in anterior chamber for, for about 0.4 millimeter. And having this kind of curvature, it doesn't cause the, um, it doesn't cause any damage of cornea. That's why we like this surgery as well. And that's the difference between I stand supra glaucose made with the other supracoroidal stent because this one doesn't touch cornea thanks to this flexible part of the supracoroidal space going. That's a schematically how the G3 or supracoroidal stand goes into supracoroidal part. Uh, I will not go to show you the video, we'll watch the video after that. And that's how we see the supracoroidal stand inside of anterior chamber angle. You see the trabecular mesh works is scleral spur, and you see the iris and see the stand visible inside of anterior chamber. Same thing on this photo. <clears throat> Again, G3 stand or the supracoroidal stand visible inside of anterior chamber angle. 
couple of words about G1, which also you're familiar already. G1 is like a curved angle and the snorkel is visible inside of anterior chamber and the other part goes inside of trabecular meshwork and allowing when the fluid goes through the snorkel to, through the hole into trabecular meshwork, then the posterior wall, which is open and in a relationship with Schlem's canal, allows to uh, outflow to be happen. That's the schematically how the G1 or the ice stand goes into the trabecular meshwork, it curved and the inserter will put inside of trabecular meshwork. That's how the angle looks like after the surgery. And you see that this part, the longer part is already behind of trabecular uh, bundles. See, these are also the eyes. This is the eye with the two pens inside. One, two, and there's, as you see, about two hours difference between two different stands. Again, the other G1, you see it's more transparent. That's because of sometimes when the stand goes a little bit anteriorly or the, uh, the pigmented part is not very dense. So sometimes it's very well transparent and you can see how is the stand located inside of trabecular meshwork. See, this is the, again, the other photo of post-operative, the snorkel is visible and there is a stand inside of trabecular meshwork. Let's talk, um, with a couple of uh, words I would like to tell you about multiple stents. Although, as you know, the single stent surgery shows the great results in terms of in our, all our clinical studies. But the multiple stents implantation has greater rate for decreasing and stabilizing the intraocular pressure in mild to moderate glaucoma. And that's a multiple stents of the same stent or in combination of different types of glaucoma stents. Indications, how many, what kind of perductors, but depends on the, from our experience. The number of stents depends on the level of intraocular pressure before surgery and the number of preoperative medications which were used for this particular case. As we, if we see that patients are using lots of medication, then we can think about more number. But uh, that's a, you see that that's a very um, naive uh, number of the publications about multiple stents in our market. This is the number of prospective the randomized study of one, two, or three stents for open-end glaucoma in patients with uncontrolled on medication. And mostly it's 119 patients. And you see the almost very close results between two or three stents. And a little bit more difference when, when we put one or two and the three. Uh, by another word, those who are using lots of medications when they get two or sometimes very rare three stands are uh, it's like a safer and we have we are having much better number after the surgeries and to, when talking about uh, multiple stands the first thing we remember is the g2 or eye stent inject as i told already the doctors the glaucoma specialists and actually not only glaucoma cataract surgeries those who are working on anterior part of the eye are going to be very happy with this stand. And what's the best thing with this stand? We, we are using with a one in insertion, with one, one um, incision. We can put, we are able to put two stands inside of trabecular meshwork. Um, <clears throat> multiple eye stand supra. Uh, that's just, I would like to introduce how do we use this combination? Eye stand supra has been used in combination with eye stand inject or G2 and trabecular eye stand, eye stand one, as well as in a combination during cataract surgery. The biggest number of the stents used in the one eye was three in our practice as stand alone procedure. But the biggest number of the stent in one eye in combination with the cataract surgery was two in our practice. <clears throat> Phrased again and then. <laughs> By some reason, it's phrased. I'm very sorry, we'll fix it now. <laughs> try, try to click the ne next one when, when show up the. 
That's what I do. Doesn't doesn't. No, work. doesn't. Maybe just a second. Sometimes it happens with the. You see my screen, right? But it's like you said, it's. It's free. It's free, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, <laughs> got it. Time for time it happens. And the most, uh, the G2 or the I stand inject is the most straightforward of the mixed devices to implant. And access to trabecular meshware goes into the two places with a single insertion device. By another word, the inserter has a, a two stands inside of uh, the trocar. So entering once into the anterior chamber, we put two stands. Uh, as I already said once, we are trying to have about two hours difference between two injected stands. This allows that allows the stents to pick up bigger territory around of that uh, the, wherever we injected, and the pl published data mentioned previously showed great results in IO pre reduction and the safety of this pre procedure for the injectable therapy inside of the eye. That's a video which we are going to show you after presentation. We don't want to we don't want to um, talk or to damage anything in our presentation. Right after my presentation, I will show the video about this surgery, about the eye stand inject. Um, that's a journey toward the sustained drug delivery system. How we started and where we go, what's the future for our eye stands? You see here G1, injectable, supracordial, and drug delivery system. That's a micro scale therapies using separately or in conjunction with superior treatment. And as a glaucoma combination opportunity with G1, minor surgical suit or in office glaucoma management, or another word, that's our dream to have the eye stand inject to be done inside of office, not in OR. That's maybe in future if it happens, but right now looks like it can happen. If such things happen in our practice in terms of stands, I think everything is possible. And multi pathway solution which is a G3 going inside of supracoroidal space. And again, about drug delivery system, which we were talking, already talked before. Again, freeze. Yes. Sorry for that. Let's see if it goes. Okay. Uh, I would like to introduce you one study which we did with uh, Glaucos with Dr. Hong. And it was a aqueous angiographic uh, humor outflow outflow checking with a fluorescein. I mean, not pure fluorescein angiography. What we did, we did um, hypothesis. Did um, indocyanin green was introduced intracamerally for 14 glaucoma subject before and after the stent inside uh, the emplacement into the anterior chamber angle, and we see how the eye stent, how the stent. Uh, implanted into the angle shows the outflow as a segmentary when the different parts of. So by another word, when we um, looked before before that, we were checking the outer collectors and then after endocyan in placing and then putting the stents inside of anterior chamber angle, we were able to see how the sequential two diaqueous angiographic system can test conventional outflow interventions and demonstrate improvement after trabecular bypass standing. That was a very nice study and we saw how it works momentarily right after the stent implantation. See, this is again, 
the OCT of anterior chamber and you see the stent inside of uh, angle, inside of trabecular network or Schlem's canal. And he, see here again, the stent inside of anterior chamber. And when you will take about the frontal view, we again see how the stent is located inside of anterior chamber, the OCT. That's an ultrasound image where you see the edges of the stent inside of angle, the other stent. Um, OCT image we have here, and that's an angle opened, short open, and we see the stent inside of the anterior chamber angle. That's the beginning of surgery, which we do when we put the gonio lens on the cornea. And when you see the surgery itself, you will see that how short does it take and uh, no complication after that. Um, in our practice, I just would like to say that the biggest complication in a very small number of patients, if it uh, doesn't help as enough as we would like to, we didn't have any severe complications, any choroidal detachment, which we had to fix after that, or the hyphema, which happens right after the procedure goes away next day, even we don't see the hyphema next day. And the procedure, when we do the implantation, the stent implantation into anterior chamber, momentarily we see the blood reflux, which says that whenever the stent is working and the pressure inside of anterior chamber is low and you see the blood in Schlem's canal, whenever you are in, you see the blood comes through our stent into anterior chamber. And that's one test when you understand that you are in the right position, you are properly inserted and we have a very good success. But this blood, even it stays inside of anterior chamber, will go away next day. And that, as I already told you, that two hours difference between two stance positions are allowing us to fix bigger number, bigger territory of anterior chamber angle. And uh, <clears throat> mix eye stand, eye stand inject in particular. These are the surgeries of future for glaucoma therapy, for glaucoma surgery being minimally invasive with minimal complications and side effects. So this is the developing the new product develops more opportunity for safer intervention. We have done in our practice, in our hospital, we have done more than 6,500 stents in more than 4,000 surgeries. And that's since 2007. And I, once I told that in 2007, we started with a, that type was a suprachoroidal stents, uh, stents, I'm sorry, and developed much more. And uh, in the beginning, this was my my favorite. But then after when it started to work, I understand that all types of stents made by Glaucos are just perfect. And what's the best thing working with this company when you always tell your impression, you always tell what's hard, what's easier, and they always improve whatever doctor says, always making the doctor's life easier. And then um, using this, um, if you, I have also prepared very short uh, presentation for com combined surgeries as well. Um, let's see if we have time, I can introduce that also. If no, I can prepare that for, for the future as well. So, and really very impressive surgery. And uh, when we do the procedure, especially on time, especially the best, the surgery works best in mild to moderate glaucomas. But we have very nice results, even in refractory cases. That's a combination of different states. We have very good results in um, uh, a combination with cataract as well. Um, by another word, this makes really, it has done really revolution for the glaucoma surgery. Surgery itself takes about Two, two minutes from the beginning when the patient lies down through the moment when he wakes up. Uh, of course, whenever we are past already the learning curve. And uh, that's, thank you very much for your uh, attention. Um, I think I'm done with this presentation. If you are okay, I would like to introduce a um, com combination or if, if we have time. Yes, yes, please, doctor. Can we? Okay. You can, you can put your videos. Okay. <clears throat> Do you see my screen now? No. What about now? You see? 
Not yet. Well, it's why you would think what's done. Let's see. You see me now? Just you, not your screen. Okay. What about now? Not yet. Not yet? Yes. Yes. Now it's okay. Is it okay? Yes. A couple yeah, of words work. about combined mix and cataract surgery and again, about our both countries working together and uh, very happy to that. We're really very close friends and thanks for another, uh, for the opportunity for me to introduce uh, our knowledge is here. That's my city, that's the center of my city of Yerevan. That's a Republican square in the evening time. Uh, talking about the combined surgeries, you know what we use very often the combined surgery, trabeculectomies with cataract, Etc. saving patients to go once more into OR, but having lots of complications when we do the trabeculectomy with FACO, uh, trying to avoid that. That's why that's a patients with trabeculectomy done in the past and the try, et cetera, and then see the, uh, the blood with um, relatively not very vascular. I mean, the complications which we are having after the trabeculectomy or as a bigger intervention now that should be avoided. And uh, going when uh, going through the uh, cataract surgery, now is an era to take out the astigmatism, to give the patients very nice vision, very great vision. That's why in one astigmatism, which happens in a very big percentage of the pe people, sometimes disturbs people and they want to be released from the astigmatism. And when we are doing the combined trabeculectomy, even not combined trabeculectomy, then phaco emulsifications, sometimes having additional astigmatism through the, because of thanks to our trabeculectomy intervention. And that's where the stent comes to help us. Just going through the linolan introduced in this with the hypermetropy of astigmatism of plus 0.75, the uh, visual acuity comes for three, four lines down, plus one diopter astigmatism gives us only five lines visual acuity. Two diopters gives only two, two lines vision. Although we have done perfectly surgery in terms of trabeculectomy, have perfectly done phaco emulsification, but the uh, astigmatism disturbs do not give very nice vision. I'm just um, now directing you to think about the combined surgeries where the stents can be done in combination with cataract surgery and the make in, in the meantime, meantime for the refractive, to correct the refraction as well. That's the G1 procedure, we can be, which can be performed with fake emulsification. That's a procedure when the stent goes inside of trabecular meshwork. See, I stent inject again, you have seen this photo, very perfectly goes with the, in the combination with fake emulsification, and we do not damage, uh, we not cause any additional astigmatism. By uh, even sometimes, can cataract surgery itself, as it, as we know, can uh, lower intraocular pressure from preoperative for those glaucoma patients whose IOP we, was well controlled with medication. Even in angle closure cases, lens lens extraction with adjective intervention can be definitive therapy. Ro those with higher intraocular pressure and damaged optic nerve are at the risk to develop worsening of glaucoma. In certain cases, combination of glaucoma and cataract surgery can be the best decision. And that's where our stents can be helped. 
Uh, in our practice, we do about 300 combined tobacco ectomies with FACO anesthesia in the Malaya Science Center. About five, six cases per year goes in combination with glaucoma valve and FACO emulsification. We have good visual outcomes and very stable IOP after that. We have one case with toric intraocular lens for combined trabeculectomy, but not that much happy with this um, case. Starting 2012, we have about 150 combined per year, fake emulsification in combination with different types of glaucostents were uh, in our hospital done during these years. And as we already said, that mix did the real progress in glaucoma surgery mentality. Minimally destructive, that's a minimally destructive intervention. And thanks to that, it is having much more and more sympathies among the doctors, among ophthalmologists. Mix approach allows to treat maximally safe glaucoma patients with clinical stage of disease in combination with cataract procedure. That's how we do the procedure. You see, this is our OR, the list, and see the screen where we see that surgery goes on. And uh, just to remind, uh, talking about refractive correction, correction of refraction, which sometimes our patients already request better results. They don't want to wear glasses after surgery. They don't want to have an end mild astigmatism. No presbyopia should be. That's, we have five cases done in combination with multifocal lenses with a stance. And we have the which two with the G1, and we have three cases in combination of multifocal lenses in combination with G3 stance. All, of course, you understand that the visual field was not that much damage. It was a mild and moderate glaucoma for these patients. And patients are very happy, actually, with the results after that. This is the, that's how the IOP goes for the patients uh, after the surgery, six months, 12, and the 54 months after that. Uh, this is just a couple of our photos. This is Alex Mylayan. I found it right after the glaucostent implantation, having fun with Alex Mylayan's uh, summer house. And that's our, uh, just um, knowing that that's a summer and very hot, I just decided to introduce this winter period of the Ararat Mountain visible from my country. And I, I just prepared very short presentation for this, just thinking that maybe you will have questions about that. Let's see if we can show you the surgery. Can I try, Clarice? Yes. The surgery? It's OK. You could try. If, if we have a time. Right. Yes. You are the boss. Ike is here. Hey. Today. <laughs> Hello, I Ike. It. Hi. I had to I had to listen in because uh, one of my favorite people to be with is Lilith and uh, I wanted to hear her talk Thank and congratulations for that. Well done as always. Very nice. It's always very nice to see you. <clears throat> Great and good to see all my Brazilian friends. Dude, you're looking already like a red wolf. You know? <laughs> you you are all in already. Okay. <laughs> This, this, this is, Do you this see is the video? This is coming no, off. No, not yet, Dr. Lilith. Okay. Hey, Lilith, I was going to ask you while you're doing that, I mean, have you had any experience or any thoughts about using MIGs with drug delivery together? No, we just were using drug delivery separately. Yeah. What, what are your That's thoughts about our study? You think there might be a future for... Uh, combining both, you know, an outflow device and then adding right. drug delivery yes. at the same time? Yeah, that's right. I think so. Should be and will be great. Okay, in this in this meantime, Lily, you, you you try to, to share with us the, the videos. Yes. I would like to to, to okay. 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 Can you see oh. the video? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on please. I just I just decided to show the combination, combined surgery. And that's the real time of the surgery, combined surgery, phaco emulsification, and the stent implantation. I just want you to see that, uh, see it's only 11 seconds done. You see the phaco emulsification with posterior 
chamber, intraocular lens implant, just to see that even in combination of cataract and stent, it takes relatively um, short time, very short time. You are done with the procedure itself. That's a cataract surgery, nothing new for you, I know. Just wanted, because I have another video for G2 inject as well, and we'll show you. But because here also you will see the G2 inject, maybe we'll just do this uh, fake up in combination with a um, stent inside. I'm sorry, on a, whenever, if, you, if you have a question and you wanna share, we can watch the video and talk if you want to. I'm ready to answer. If there is anything, again, fake emulsification, you will see. Again, this is the real time. And all the surgeries go, goes under the local anesthesia, as all of you do as well. And uh, the only difference between um, combined, that's just the an anesthesiologists are next to us. So uh, because of echo emulsification, anesthesiologists doing our monitoring. In terms of a stent implantation, nothing is going during that procedure. Just the patient lies down, the drop of before that, we are putting the pilocarpine drop into anterior chamber, uh, uh, polycarpine drop into the conjunctival space and then doing the uh, surgery, the stent implantation. Uh, but in this case, see that the anterior, the pupil is dilated, but for sure the dilated pupil never disturbs, even with dilated pupil, we are very okay to put the stent inside of the angle. We don't need that much to constrict the pupil because when we remove the lens itself, goes easily to the Actually, I remember that's a program which ICAMET uh, suggested me to use in the fake emulsification working all together. This is polishing of, now the polishing will be done. That's a polishing of, because we had a pseudo exfoliating material and when I have pseudo exfoliating material, mostly trying to do the polishing of the capsule as well. And you will see that. I hope it's not boring for you because this part, you know, everybody knows very well. Everybody does perfectly, but just to, to have a full uh, view, to have a full impression from the procedure itself. That's Armenian language we are telling. When you are treating your patient and he can understand your language, this is always easier than when the doctors are coming and talking. Uh, cannot talk. When you ask the patient, look down or up or straight or straight ahead, it's easier to perform the procedure. The viscoelastic goes inside of first, inside of to put the lens. <clears throat> Now, when, then after we're done with fake emulsification and the uh, lenses inside of posterior chamber, then you will see that the most interesting, I mean, the most interesting part, the part which I was going to introduce you. And when I do the cataract surgery, I am mostly sitting in a 12 o'clock position. But sometimes when you know, with combination, sometimes we sit, uh, we sit temporarily, so it's, we don't have to change the position to put the stent inside of anterior chamber. So we just continue to sit there and put it. Now we just turn to the microscope position to the temporal part, then making a little bit angle. That's why we lose the view because I did an angle for about 120 degrees or even less now. We, sometimes we even do not tilt the, the, the microscope because the gonial lens allows us to do. Now we go inside of anterior chamber and that's the stent, you see the angle. You see the V-slot here, see the V-slot, the part where, where the stent is visible when it comes. This slot part allows us to see the stent which is coming. Pushing a little bit, not that, just a bending mile. Uh, here, just a second, we'd like to stop and show you something. When we do the stent implantation, the most important thing, do not push that much by the, uh, with the gonioscope. Sometimes we lose uh, the, the 
impression and sometimes pushing that much and losing the view. Uh, the most important thing in here, just to be very gentle, put on the cornea, the gonial lens, and it makes um, very well, we have very nice view in, the, in that. And see here already the blood reflux happens here because the pressure is very low down, some viscoelastic is out. So whenever the stent is inside and the pressure comes even more down, we see the blood reflux, which then we can remove with the irrigation and the aspiration. These are stent and you see the two hours difference between two stents. That's a, one is about eight o'clock, the other is it's like a eight, the other is about 10 o'clock position. If this is the left half, if this is the right half, then we put again superonasal and inferonasal with the stent, but this goes nasal. Then I come to the my to my proper position to make the irrigation aspiration to remove all this coelastic from anterior chamber. I mean, I'm not the best cataract surgeon, or but see, all the procedure itself took only a little bit, about six minutes. And we are done with the surgery and, uh, and the pressure comes very low down. Just in comparing with the uh, patients, sometimes the doctors say that even if you do cataract surgery, you will bring the pressure down, but that's not the case. When we have many patients, because you know a lot of stent implant patients were done in our hospital, we have many patients whose one eye was done only cataract surgery, almost the same stage of glaucoma, and the other eye had a combination of cataract plus stent surgery, and patient is continuing to use the medication in the eye where we didn't put the stent, and the, because this eye, no uh, medications. And another way, is, or sometime after that, we put a stent into the anterior chamber angle and save the patients from medications. And I will be very happy to answer to your question. Do you see me? Yes, yes. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Lilich, for your presentation. And now we are going to, to have uh, some minutes of discussion. And it's my great pleasure to have here Dr. Ike Ahmed with us from Toronto, Canada. Are you okay, Ike? Oh yes, okay. I, I'm just uh, I'm just listening. I, I want to I want to make sure Lilith has uh, great points, and I've been with her many times. She's fantastic. She has done ten thousands and ten thousands of mixed procedures, and uh, is a great teacher. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I yeah. And, and, and then and uh, I'd like to introduce to you, uh, Dr. Liti. I, I know you you know him, Dr. Ricardo Guedes. Yes. He will join us for the discussion. Yes, okay. Him. Obrigado, Ricardo. So I have one 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 question for you three. Okay. How do you manage with persistent bleeding during the procedure? The, the bleeding? Yeah. Um the bleeding happens as a, you mean as a blood reflux, right? I mean, when, when the blood comes through the stents from the Schlemm's canal into anterior chamber angle, mostly we didn't have any problems. The people who are using anticoagulants, we are asking, we ask them to stop the medication before the procedure. But even those uh, who cannot do that, for example, sometimes we have patients who are using anticoagulants because of a previous heart surgery, and they have to continue. Uh, anyhow, the blood goes away uh, without any intervention. I had only one case um, whom I had to put a uh, avastin into the anterior chamber angle because he got mild neovascularization later on. That was not because of a stent. That was just because after that, that the stent was inside of anterior chamber angle, he developed neovascular glaucoma, we started to treat him as a neovascular later on. That's it. But we don't, we didn't do anything for the blood inside of anterior chamber. It goes away itself. Okay, and you like? So I, I think a couple of things. I, I, I do find that um, placing the stents prior to FACO, there's just lead, less blood reflux in the canal. And so when you're manipulating stents or cutting into the canal, there's just less blood because the eye is firm and you have not yet done FACO. That's one thing. Uh, I don't think we typically need to stop blood thinners or antiplatelet, uh, you know, drugs. 
Um, and then I do use a, a good amount of viscoelastic for the, uh, for the second generation inject. I think it's good to have a really good fill um, and keep the eye uh, inflated and also throughout the procedure and also at the end, really keep the eye really well pressurized. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the device is in the canal and it's not, it's not damaged the angle, I very rarely, I can't even remember a case where there was too much bleeding for me to yes. handle or right. our fellows. It's so uncommon. It's different than goniotomy or trabeculotomy. Right. That's one of the big differentiations between stenting versus doing adventure and trabeculotomy. So I, I don't know, I just, I mean, with all our fellows and residents doing all our cases as well, we really adhere to these principles um, and I just haven't seen it to be a major issue. I think the problem is happening when it's early people starting, they're pressing on the, on the, on the inner, on the incision, the viscoelastic is coming out of the eye, the pressure is hypotenuse and you're trying to put the stent in and it's bleeding. We have to make sure we put more viscoelastic in to make sure that it's uh, really, uh, really, really well formed. And I, I typically use Helon GV when it was available, but I use Helon now. Those are the, those are the only things I would say as far as what I, what I do in terms of uh, blood. And it's a, it's a good question. Okay. Hey, Carlo, and you? What's your experience? Your experience? Yeah, I think, I think uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Lilith for great speak and Ike for sharing his thoughts, okay, uh, also. Uh, I, I would like to reinforce that it's very important to keep the eye uh, pressurized during the eye stent implantation. And also at the end of the surgery, when you take out the viscoelastic, it's important to refill with BSS and keep the eye pressured at the end of the surgery. So uh, in the next couple of hours after surgery, there is not a, a huge amount of blood reflux. Uh, I'd like to make a question, if I, if I may, to Lilith. Yes, sure. And uh, I see uh, that you have a great experience for a long time. You've been doing stents for more than 10 years now. And uh, I'd like to, for, for you to share your thoughts on what is the impact of operating mild to moderate glaucoma uh, in the public health system of Armenia. Do you see already any impact, any, any positive impact to have uh, a mild glaucoma controlled by surgery so early and what is the impact and, and the uh, uh, number of uh, most uh, invasive surgeries afterwards or uh, in the rate of uh, 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 blindness and, and so on. Do you see anything of this in the Armenian public health already or it's too early? Yes, thank you very much, Doctor, for a very interesting question, actually. Uh, you, and um, uh, we have, as a first, I would like to say that in Armenia, we have many patients who just uh, save their glaucomas for very end stages. We have lots of patients with uh, advanced glaucomas, a lot. But what's the best thing when they come with advanced glaucoma and we are doing any intervention for that and we are saving the better. Right? That's how we get lots of patients with uh, mild and moderate glaucomas, because mostly when we are treating the other eye, which is, for example, uh, very um, constricted visual field and very advanced glaucoma, but still seeing eye, right? we always suggest them, if you are going, do not use the medications. Or if you think that when we do the laser for you or something else, or because we're sure that sometimes we do not take the medication, you know, the patients think that, you know, I was taking the medication, but because since it didn't help, I stopped that. What means didn't help? That just because he didn't see the improvement of vision, even if you explain them many times. Anyhow, people think that if the vision doesn't go better, it means that the medication doesn't help. They stop the medication and losing vision. That's why in our cases, since we have an opportunity to put a stance for them, very often, if the medications help, or even sometimes if medications do not help, we suggest them to pick up them in a more mild to moderate glaucoma mostly in the eyes where the other eye is advanced then. So people know what happens if you do not treat enough your glaucoma. And that's how we have lots of patients and they are very happy actually. And uh, with the other eye, and bringing their neighbors, their friends and um, waiting online before we call them to put the stent into the angle. And I think 
my opinion as a glaucoma specialist for future, then maybe even in future, the stent can be the uh, intervention of the first line therapy. Because when the angle is safe and we have not used any medication, any chemical uh, intervention in the eye, the stent is working better if you have very safe uh, anatomically or physiologically safe anterior chamber angle. Um, and that just caring about the public health, it's a little bit different here now. Um, that we have very lots of governmental suggestion for the um, patients. And the people are very lucky to have the stent implantation. We have nice, really nice results. Since the uh, properly inserted, um, we, um, we have uh, perfect results after that if the surgery gone well. I don't know if okay. I, I... Thank you. Thank you. Another, another question for beginners. Uh, this question is for you, Lilith, Ike, and Ricardo as well. Uh, we have many beginners uh, join us during this, sure. this webinar. And what is your tip for uh, non-pigmented trabecular meshwork during the surgery? Mm -hmm. how, how, do you, how, do you, how, do, how do you manage with this situation? Uh, I, that's very nice. We have uh, uh, young doctors with us. That's why I started my presentation with telling very beginning points also about the angle so that they can also think about that. And very nice that even younger doctors are asking like that. Uh, whenever we get the trabecular meshwork, pigmented tab, part of trabecular meshwork, then needs that right next to that, anteriorly to that, we have non-pigmented part because you know that the length of trabecular meshwork comes to the 7, 75, 100 micrometers. So whenever you get, you see the pigmented part. And even if we go inside of non-pigmented part, my opinion that even in this case, the stent helps because being tilted being, for example, G1 stent or even G2 stents, they uh, doing the bypass of trabecular meshwork and working in terms of outflow. Even okay, if you I... are inside of non-pigmented part. Okay, I can hear sometimes it's difficult to, to to differentiate the, the, the parts of the trabecular meshwork when you don't see pigments. Yeah, so for and, beginners, yeah, how, how, how is your tip? The most important thing, if you see the angle and you know the angle itself, you know where the squirrel spur, then after the squirrel spur coming to the corneal part, you will see if this is pigmented, it's very easy. Even with pigmented trabecular meshwork, very easy go in and we have very nice results right after then it's like a strong part keeping the stent inside of anterior end. But in terms of it, just knowing the anatomy, wherever you find the scleral spur and then after the scleral spur, some marks are anyhow visible. If there is, even if there is no pigmentation, anyhow we see the trabecular meshwork as a mild, uh, like a very mild pigmentation of some different structure from scleral spur. Scleral okay. spur to find easier. So right after that, you can see. So I think, um, yeah, I, I think it's really important to do a good gonia exam before because often you'll pick up little subtleties in the examination room, uh, looking at the angle, knowing this, knowing this very little pigmentation, looking at the ciliary body band, the scleral spur. But honestly, uh, what I what I typically do is I just tell our residents and fellows inject tripan blue, you know, put tripan blue in the anterior chamber, you can dilute it, just fill the eye up and then, you know, wash it out and you will see a very nice staining of the trabecular meshwork. And also it'll make your capsular excess maybe a bit easier too. That's right, good point. As, as long as the patient isn't pseudophagic, sometimes if they're pseudophagic, then sometimes the tripan blue goes around the zonules, you know? So in that case, you should put some, maybe some dispersive viscoelastic in the periphery of the IOL bag mm -hmm. or the, uh, you know, yeah. sulcus. Yeah. Otherwise just put the tripan blue in, wait for 30 seconds, wash okay. it out. I don't put any air in. I just inject right into the anterior chamber like I would for a white cataract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it does a nice job. And then also you can do a nice capsular excess because you have even more confidence. Okay. And you, Hikard. Another Besides the tripan blue, uh, I think uh, tri tripan blue is, it's a, it's a good tip. Uh, mainly for the cataract surgeon who is not very uh, used to do cornioscopic exam. But uh, what, what I do typically is before placing the stent right after FACO, I, I proposedly uh, perform a hypotony in the eye. So the blood reflux 
goes into the Schlems canal. And, and then when I look at the, at the angle, I see the, the blood and then I reinflate the eye with the visco. So I know exactly where the Schlems canal is. Okay. So now we are move on to Alberto's uh, questions. Uh, Alberto have has some questions from the chat. Alberto, go on. Okay. First of all, uh, great presentation, Lilith. It was really, really nice to get from from the 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 most giant center in the world. I would like to visit. I already told Emilio. So next time he. <laughs> He will put me in, the, in his luggage so I can come in. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to uh, ask myself, what is in the pipeline? You already mentioned about the idols, of course. And uh, I heard about, a, a, let me double check here. It's called I Stent Infinite. So it's like uh, three stents for advanced and refractory glaucoma. So mm -hmm. uh, are you guys already doing this in Armenia? And what else is coming? Yes, Dr. Albert, thank you very much for a nice question and such a good words about the presentation. Yes, we have done this surgery in the past uh, using even the wider, wider snorkel. It was wider for refractory cases, for higher pressure. We were putting three stents. At the meantime, we tried insertion. But our results, our study showed that two or three stents doesn't make any difference in terms of IOP lowering. So if it helps, helps with the stents, two stents. And the second stent is just in case to replace, to pick up. But anyhow, for very advanced cases, we were using uh, two different types of stents. For example, it could be G2 or I stent inject with suprachoroidal stent inside. I mean, the combination of two different pathways to improve. So in this case, it works better and we are having, but at least the angle should be wildly open. Or we have very nice results for suprachoroidal space uh, stents for younger generation. I don't know, maybe that's because of maybe the suprachoroidal space for younger patients are more flexible, more response, lots of response from that. In terms of what kind of patients, what kind of IOP, how advanced is that, you can combine two different types of the stents or put as the said, as you said, the wider snorkel stents, at, uh, two are enough. That's our, how our study showed that. Okay, nice. So again, for the beginners, yeah, you mentioned uh, Alex Wong's work so for you, for Ike, for Emilio, and for Ricardo, what should be a better spot, a better region to implant the two uh, G2 stents? Um, if you will be able to um, see angiograph, to have an angiographic view before the surgery and to understand where the collectors are more active, then we can understand where to put. That's the reason why sometimes two stents are helping better not because of the outflow is better, but just because of the space is the best one. For right now, our knowledge, our experience, anyhow says that we are doing uh, only going into the angle. But I'm sure that in future we will find the exam, we will find the angiography or autoangiography view before the surgery to understand where to put this stand. That will be the era when we will start to put to make a stent implantation as the first line medication. Whenever we find that, we can do that as the first intervention. But right now, we have to just put into the angle because all the parts of angle are working. Depends of the more active or less active. Anyhow, we put the stents, they are working. But if we find the nice space, perfect space, we, we will have a better results. That's why sometimes we have patients with the same patient with two different almost the same angle, but we are having different results in terms of IOP lowering, just because of maybe the space where we put was not very much active, was less active. But right now we have to just put the stand into the end. I want to add something. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really great question. And we kind of need to have that sort of, uh, you know, angiography like we do for the, for cardiac. 
I think it'll help us, number one, to just assess the distal outflow system. There are some eyes where we do stenting where we don't get a result. It doesn't lower the pressure. And we suspect either location may be a difference or maybe they have downstream resistance and, and a problem there. Uh, you know, we do see that the majority of uh, larger aqueous veins, remember, we have about 15 to 30 collector channels coming out of, out of our canal. Um, each collector channel leads into a distal outflow space. It may be a plexus, which is a more networked, uh, you know, venous system, or it may be an aqueous vein, which is a larger vein. And these larger veins have been described by Asher many years ago, and their capacity of a vein is much larger than a plexus. So theoretically, if you can find these veins, you may be able to take advantage of more outflow because of less resistance. And these are typically found in the inferior quadrants, particularly infranasal. So certainly you should, you should attempt to put a stent in the infranasal quadrant at the very least. And then if you have additional stents, then place them, uh, you know, across the, uh, the other parts of the angle. But that, that's what I would say. I do look for blood reflux and see where it's coming focally from. That may give us an idea where there might be some larger uh, aqueous veins. And that helps to do it before the FACO because after FACO, the blood may be filling the entire canal. So you really cannot see where these focal areas are coming from. Pigmentation also can be a sign of flow. And so if we have more pigmentation focally in certain areas. That may be a place to look. But that's my current thinking. I want to put a stent in an area where there's going to be a larger highway coming out of it rather than a small little, you know, uh, back road. Um, and that's where that's where it is. I think I think that's where uh, I think we, we see some 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 futuristic application, like you said. Little also mentioned the W, right? I think you mentioned W before the wider flange, which mm -hmm. will make it easier to implant the inject because with the inject, sometimes you go too deep or too superficial. Mm -hmm. With the W, yeah. you can push hard enough and not worry. You can push enough and you can release and it won't bury. It shouldn't bury. And so that's, all, that's also something. And you're right. The infinite with three, we'll see how the studies go. That's designed more for standalone uh, refractory populations or, you know, with more advanced glaucoma. Lilith makes a good point. You know, our studies kind of maybe showed a small difference between going from two to three. Uh, but maybe is it worth it or not? I don't know if we have the answer to that. Uh, and of course, the other thing to mention as far as future application is now we're looking also at combining things like, for example, viscodilation and stenting or doing a trabeculotomy partially and stenting uh, or doing some multiple aspect. And let us let study this already with supercoroidal and with, with the trabecular meshwork. But even with the trabecular meshwork, we can do different things. So all these all these are still there. It's still very early. Those of you who aren't doing, who are not doing mixed procedures, don't worry. There's still so much more to learn. And whether you do eye stents or whether you do uh, admin trabeculotomy, in some form or fashion, I think these are uh, fu future and present application. Yeah, nice. Yeah, you co you coined the, the term mix plus. That's that's it. You combining combining stuff. So Emilio, wanna add something? I had no, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, in in real life, the the the, the clinical uh, tip you have is before surgery is performing a good gonioscopy procedure and during the surgery uh, is in my opinion is pigmentation you you can you can see spots of pigmentation and even even if you have an asymmetric glaucoma uh, meshwork uh, uh, pigmentation you have some some spots of pigmentation so i try to 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 insert the stents uh, in those areas even though sometimes we have uh, uh, less than two hours of difference, but I prefer clinically to have this this part of pigmentation uh, sparse in, in the, the view. Mm -hmm. So nice. Uh, we have a question from the chat. Actually, it's from Eloisa Maestrini. Mm -hmm. So uh, she said that some studies with a CYPAS implant show the occurrence of severe sudden IOP peaks, weeks or even months after implantation. So Lilith, what is your experience with the uh, Stan Supra? Well, <clears throat> I, yeah, as I already told, the Stan Supra, which we used, we did it in 2007. This was the first stand I was implanted with Glaucos Company. And I like, I love very much this surgery, very much. And uh, again, with this, in the beginning, when we started to do, many doctors were thinking that I, we are not in supracorridor space. That's how easy was it going in. Look, they even think that it thought that it goes into the posterior chamber. Then after when we did ultrasound sir, examined, we saw that it's exactly as I showed already, that it's exa exactly in supracoidal space. Another word, if we damage that much angle, sometimes it is causing 
uh, when during the learning curve, when we just learn. Sometimes the stent itself, when we are doing procedure and movement, additional movement can cause more angle damaging in terms of a iridodialysis or psychodialysis. This is causing some inflammation after that around and causing IOP elevation. If it happened in the beginning, we were putting patients on a meds for a while before it goes away. But in terms of a IOP level, I really love this surgery. And we had a very good results with supracoidal uh, uh, stents implanted into the for the glaucoma patients, and especially as I already told, for younger people. And what's the best thing? What's the difference between the I stand, uh, the G3 or supracoidal stent and SIFAS? Because of the flexible part, the soft part, which goes into supracoidal space, the titanium or the metallic part doesn't touch cornea that much or iris because it takes the curvature of the supracoidal space, and we are in very safe position. But the only thing it cannot be done in narrow angle glaucoma, cannot be the, the angle should be widely open, the supracoridal space entrance should be very well visible. Then we go for supracoridal stencing. Uh, compare with the G2 or G1 or I stent or I stent in jet. Even if we see completely the scleral spur and the ciliary body is not well visible, we can do the I stent or I stent in jet. By G3, the supracoidal should go when we see completely the ciliary body as well in the angle. Albert, Albert. And there is a, 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 a difference basically between the two stents. It's because of this, the cypress is a, a straight tube. And you see the, the, the cypress, the, the, the supra, it's not a straight tube, it's a little, a little bit curved. So it keeps the anatomy. It keeps the anatomy so. of the, yeah. What do you think I can, Ricardo, about this? I, I, I agree. I think that there's also more standardization <coughs> because you have this cuff. Mm -hmm. So it kind of standardizes where, where, where it should go. And I think it, it is certainly more flexible. Um, you know, I mean, w with the canal-based devices, we, we rarely see these spikes that can happen, you know. This is more phenomena with with healing around uh, what I find sometimes with supracoidal devices, but I think in the canal you can be pretty well assured that it's rare to get a spike unless it's in the first few weeks, where sometimes it could be a steroid response or it could be blood, but after the first few weeks, um, you know, and I recommend not to use too much steroid. By the way, uh, I, I think it's rare to see a spike. I mean, sometimes they don't work, and and then you're you know back on medications, but it's rare to see that. The patient all of a sudden spikes up in my experience super cordial though is another story i will say that that's sometimes you see this closing like a cleft almost in some cases and that's uh that's with any super cordial approach not just with the particularly supra but any approach it could it could, it could be an issue uh and i think cornea yeah i agree i think this is less likely to have a corneal issue because of the design and the material uh you know differences nice so i think it's a it's becoming late to Lilith, so I no, think yeah. That's the best time. <laughs> best time, okay. I've been I've been with Lilith like you have, and she's running at three in the morning, no problem, dance. <laughs> no problem, okay. So Ricardo, wanna wanna ask something? One more question. A final tip. I'd like I'd like to share uh, one thought uh, to Lilith and Ike. Uh, I've been using uh, the association of the G two and the G1, and, and then with three stamps. Mm -hmm. I think it, it makes sense because you have two uh, bypasses, the, the, the G2, and then we have one that also makes a, a, a stance the intracanalicular space with the G1. Mm -hmm. Although it's a small uh, length, it's just one millimeter, but you, just, you, you also keep the, the canal open and avoiding the canal for collapsing. Uh, and I've, I've been using this for almost two years now. And when we compared the results between the three stands and the, the, the only the G2, we get uh, a little more of IOP reduction with the three. Uh, I, I'd like to know if you have any experience on this or what are your thoughts on this? I have done combination of G1 and G2 as well. And I have done, and that, that time it was not an ice tent inject, but the other 
modification of G2. So I, I put two G1s and one G2. And the light results very well, very nice. So we put two G1s right on the left and put in the middle one G2. That time it was not right. with the previous modification of G2. And you are right, it picks up like, like a two parts of the same outflow, but in the different regions, different uh, points. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I certainly have done all the different combinations and I, I, I have done a number that we put two in and then we put a, you know, a G1 in. And the question is, is the result better because you have three bypasses in, that, in essence, or is it because you have added a bit of a one millimeter scaffold? It's hard to know. Um, obviously, then, you know, there are other questions that come up with cost, uh, things like that. So I, I think I think that, you know, if you can if you can put three in, I think uh, and put one G1 and two G2s, I think that's uh, that's great if you can. Um, most of them for me is because I have maybe the resident working with me and they have four clicks and the G2 done. And then mm -hmm. you know what, the, the, one of them wasn't well placed. So I put another I put a G1 on top of it or around it. Uh, so I think I think those are some of the questions. So really, to answer the question would be would be to maybe like look at the difference between, for example, the infinite, which is three G three G twos versus the mm -hmm. two G two and one G one, which is what you're saying. And, and see whether the difference makes it with that. I know many people also ask if you have Ricardo, if you have G ones, why not put three G ones in? But I think you probably will say it's easier to put the G twos in, you know, when you're farther yes. away than put a you know a G one in like this. And that's probably why you see that this is a good combination to balance out with. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. So, Lilith, yes. really appreciate your lecture, your time. Thank you so much. I would like also to thank my friends, Ike and Ricardo. Ike was a like a special guest, a surprise <laughs> one for, for you guys. I I just text him, hey Ike, show up, man, and <laughs> he's here. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Thank I you would, very uh, much for such a things you you just organized and make it very like it is easily and make all the my presentation very easily done even with my mistakes and with problems with computer and I was very happy to see all of you once more although the the distances do not allow now to see each other at least at the conferences but that's another opportunity to meet each other and share but it's this will be gone very soon we'll meet in Armenia, yeah. in Brazil, in Canada, or in US. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, I would love to visit you, Lilith, in Armenia. Yeah. Okay. We are waiting, we yeah. are waiting for oh, you great. and we'll be very happy. Okay, Alberto, okay. I'm, coming with, I'm coming with you and everybody else in Brazil. We're going to, we're going to, go, we're going to go to Yerevan. Okay, all set. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a deal. Good deal, wine. Guys. Thank you, Clarice. Thank you very much for organizing. Thank you very much. Thank you That's for good. accepting our invitation. You are fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Have a good weekend. Thank Pray you. Bye-bye. Have a nice bye. day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.